Hello. My name is Father Anton Vogelsang. I'm a priest of the Legionaries of Christ, and it is an honor for me to accompany you during this Holy Week. During this time, we will be meditating on the second reading of the Office of Readings. The reading for today, Monday of Holy Week, is taken from a sermon given by St. Augustine. It starts by saying, The passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the hope of glory and a lesson in patience. And it goes on to say, The death of our Lord, our God, should not be a cause of shame for us. Rather, it should be our greatest hope. So for today's meditation, I would like to focus on the word hope which appears in both of these passages. The Catechism of the Catholic Church defines it in the following way. Hope is the theological virtue by which we desire the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as our happiness, placing our trust in Christ's promises and relying not on our own strength, but on the help of the grace of the Holy Spirit. I think we all desire in the depths of our hearts the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. Life here on earth is beautiful. And therefore, I think really no one wants to die. At least I don't want to. But at the same time, neither do I want to live forever. I'm now 55 years old, and I'm beginning to experience the limitations of this life. On a physical level, I have reached the age where when I wake up in the morning, I feel a new pain here or there. Ouch, that didn't hurt before. Well, now it does. Also, I've had three knee operations, and although I can walk without problems, thanks be to God, I can no longer play the sports I so love to play. I certainly don't want to live another thousand or million years, let alone forever this way. And on a spiritual level, I have begun to notice how the beautiful creatures of this world are incapable of fulfilling the desires of my heart. Only God can do so. So, although I don't want to die, the idea of living forever in this world with these limitations is becoming a burden in my heart. And so, the theological virtue of hope has become important to me. As the Catechism says, we desire the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as our happiness because Christ has promised it and we can trust that he will be faithful to his promises. But what has God promised us, you may be wondering? Well, the Bible tells us. We read in the first letter of John, and this is what he has promised us, eternal life. But how can we know that God is faithful to his promises? Well, once again, the Bible tells us God is faithful. In fact, we can consider the whole story of the Bible as a story of God faithfully fulfilling his promises. In Genesis, God called Abraham and said to him, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who curses you I will curse. And by you all the families of the earth shall bless themselves. We can find in this passage three promises. First, the promise of the land. God told Abraham to leave his country and his family and go to the land that he would show him. Second, we have the promise of descendants that will grow into a great nation. Remember, Abraham didn't have any children at this time, and he was already 75 years old. But worse, his wife Sarah was 65 years old and sterile. And the third promise is that of a blessing for all the families of the earth. In the following chapters of Genesis, God will elevate these promises to the level of a covenantal oath. And these oaths define the structure for the rest of the story of the Bible. 
The books of Exodus to Joshua tell us how God fulfilled his promise of giving them a land. In fact, Joshua will say at the end of his life, and now I'm about to go the way of all the earth. He's about to die. And you know in your hearts and souls, all of you, that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God promised concerning you. All have come to pass for you. Not one of them has failed. The books of Judges to Second Chronicles tell us the story of how Abraham's de descendants become a great nation, the kingdom of David, fulfilling God's second promise. And God's third promise is fulfilled in the Gospels. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. Jesus Christ is God's blessing for us. It is the fulfillment of his promise. And so can you see how the story of the Bible of, is a story of God faithfully fulfilling all of his promises? And that is why we can hope that he will also fulfill his promise to us, to give us eternal life. Turning back to St. Augustine's text, he also says that we can trust in God's promises. I spoke about the fulfillment of God's promises in the biblical story as the foundation of this hope. St. Augustine speaks about Christ's passion as this foundation. We read, What may not the hearts of believers promise themselves as the gift of God's grace, when for their sake God's only Son, co-eternal with the Father, was not content only to be born as man from human stock, but even died at the hands of the men he created? Or, he says, how can he whose promises are true fail to reward the saints when he bore the punishments of sinners, though without sin himself? And when Christ has already given us the gift of his death, who is to doubt that he will give the saints the gift of his own life? Why does our human frailty hesitate to believe that mankind will one day live with God? God has shown us his love. He has proven it by sending us his son to die for us. And so he will most certainly fulfill his promises to us. Therefore, St. Augustine ends the, the reading of today with an exhortation. Brethren, let us then fearlessly acknowledge and even openly proclaim that Christ was crucified for us, let us confess it, not in fear, but in joy, not in shame, but in glory. So, just like St. Paul, who didn't boast about the great things Jesus did in the creation or as king, but as he said, as for me, far be it from me to glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Dear brothers and sisters, I think this message is very important for us today. It seems that all the human securities we had built up in our society are beginning to collapse. We have war once again in Europe and the threat of nuclear war lies on the, on the horizon like dark storm clouds. Our society is more and more divided. The economic situation is uncertain. People now suffer from eco-anxiety. Things just seem to be getting worse and worse. But in this situation, St. Augustine's message is quite relevant for us today. We need to remember that as Christians, we hope for eternal life in heaven, not eternal life here on earth. And that our hope is firm because God is faithful to his promises. We know this because he sent his son to save us through his passion, death, resurrection, and ascension. Let us pray for each other today that God may grant us firm hope and that this hope may be the source of our joy despite all the difficulties and crosses we may have to carry.
May God bless you.